into the Expo and Millennium line as part of the you integration with the Evergreen extension. So we have Ian Fisher here from BCRTC, the manager of operations planning. So he's going to provide a technical briefing. Following that, then we'll do a Q&A, and we have Ian for that along with our CEO, Kevin Desmond. So with that, no, I will started. pass it on to Ian. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Okay. So Starting October 22nd, we're going to be making some changes to the SkyTrain network to get ready for the opening of the Evergreen extension later this year. So these changes will require a bit of adjustment to the way that the Expo and Millennium Line operates today. So as of October 22nd, the, you can see our current operation on the upper diagram here and our future operation on the lower diagram. So the big change is that the Millennium Line, instead of running from waterfront through to Columbia and U.S. Minster and back to BCC Clark, will become a more straightforward east-west line from BCC Clark to initially just Mohe Town Center, but then once the Evergreen extension opens later this year, it will continue on to Lafarge Lake Douglas. The Expo line, meanwhile, will pick up some of the stations currently served by the Millennium Line at US Minster. So you can see that the Expo line will become a branching service at Columbia. So instead of just going to King George, most trains will go to King George, but also we'll have the trains coming to Bowie Town Center and Rush Valley University on the Expo line as well. So we're making this change to accommodate the demand that we expect to see with the available train resources that we have on hand, as well as to make the system more easy to understand for the customer, as the current way that the Millennium Line works has caused confusion for a decade, over a decade actually, because the Millennium Line comes through, it doubles back on itself, and then it passes through the same station twice. That's caused a lot of confusion for our customers. This future operating plan changes that. So the Millennium Line becomes a more straightforward east-west line, and the Expo Line becomes also an unambiguous line wherever you're standing. There's only one way to get to the station that you see the train's destination. And it's also worth drawing a parallel with the Candle Line, and the Candle Line is a single line, but it branches at Bridgeport to go to Whitegar Airport and Richmond Brickhouse. So the operation of the Expo Line in future will be very similar, and that particular operation hasn't caused a lot of confusion on the Candle Line, so we expect to be the same on the Expo Line. And in addition, with this change, we'll be increasing the frequency of service on the Millennium Line. So right now, you'll get a train every five and a half to six minutes on the Millennium Line. Starting October 22nd, you'll get a train about every three and a half minutes for most of the day on the Millennium Line. And on the Expo Line, we're going to switch from running a mixed fleet of different uh, train capacities to using consistently larger trains. So you'll see four-car trains of the newer type of rolling stock or six-car trains of the older rolling stock. So we think that will provide a more consistent customer experience because all the trains will be about the same size and we'll leave passengers on the platforms less of the time with those trains all being long and using the full length of the platform. <laughs> okay, th thanks Ian. Um, so we'll begin the question and answer portion right now. Uh, so we'll take questions one by one and just let us know who the question's for and we'll answer it. Any questions? That's a very fair question. So in mid-October we're going to be doing some testing to make sure that we can operate the whole system effectively and make sure that our staff are familiar with the Evergreen extension, all the stations, how to drive trains in that area. So what we need is time to both test the system to make sure that it's going to be reliable as well as familiarize our staff. So that's where you're going to see this change October 22nd and then we'll be thinking about a month and a half or more potentially to go through the testing and staff familiarization and training and then we'll be ready to have a really quality opening providing excellent customer service. So uh, we're really focused on October, uh, Kevin Desmond, CEO. We're focused on October 22nd. The province announced uh, the other day that the line will be open before Christmas, so it'll be open before Christmas. There, there, you know, in truth, once the province turns over the pro program to Translink, so the province is building the system. So it's not quite finished yet. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done on more or less the systems elements. They turn it over to us, then we've got to start real testing. So until we've gotten into the testing, we're not going to be comfortable announcing a date. We're, we're very, very confident we'll open up before Christmas. If it can open sooner, um, we'll ever, 
let everybody know that this milestone of October 22nd um, is really key to start working the system and, and that really supports the testing environment. And it, it's a great opportunity for our customers before the extension opens um, to get used to the new pattern. Next question. If um, the Millennium Lab trains are going to be coming a little more frequently with the new system, does that mean the Expo Lab trains are coming a little less frequently? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use two car trains of our newer rolling stock on the Millennium Line so we can run a more frequent service, which gets more ridership. So the change in frequency on the Expo line is going to be very minor. It's probably going to be imperceptible. There is a bit of a change because we're going to run longer trains. So we're going to take those shorter trains and make them into slightly fewer trains to run the longer trains. But it's really going to be hard to notice for the customer. I think they'll mostly notice that all the trains are the same size. It's a more consistent customer experience instead of some trains being overloaded. That's right, yeah, only the Expo line will serve the downtown stations. Uh, and for a lot of our ridership, this change won't make any difference to them because they come from Surrey, they just use the Expo line right now, or they board anywhere between Columbia and Waterfront. There's no change to the operation for them. And anyone who's using the Millennium line from Eastern Burgundy who goes towards Vancouver, it's not really going to change the pattern for them. The people who will see the most change would be the ones who come from, say, Surrey and want to go to North Burnaby or from U.S. Minister and want to go to North Burnaby. They might have an additional transfer, but one thing you will notice is that we're extending these Expo trains not just to Lodi Town Center, but one station further to Professional University, and that's because there's a very major bus interchange at Professional University to get students up to SFU. So we're going to keep those Expo trains running that extra distance to cut down on transfers and increase customer convenience. I want to give you all a, a, a factoid that you might want to report when the um, uh, when the extension does open. We'll once again have the longest automated rail line in the world. So don't know how long that will last after um, after this year, but that's a, a a nice point of pride here for the uh, for the Vancouver region and for and for Translink. Actually be increased by just over 10 percent because we're going to run the same size train a little bit more often. It's actually going to be higher capacity than we can buy today because we're getting about twice as frequent service in the future with the Millennium uh, Line once it's extended into the Evergreen territory. I should start working for a second as far as that. That's that's where it comes from. We are limited by our available fleet as to how much capacity we provide. I think uh, Kevin might be able to speak to some additional fleet that might be coming in a few years that will help to alle alleviate some of our existing capacity issues into downtown. Yes. So the, we're hopeful we'll be executing a, a contract with the, the builder for the Expo and Millennium Line trains. That's 28 additional cars. Uh, we're hopeful they'll be here by late 2018, maybe 2019, and that is fully funded by the, the Phase 1. Uh, a similar number of cars for Canada Line. Uh, they, we do not have an open contract to use for the Canada Line cars, so they're going to take a little bit longer. We'll have to go through a, a new procurement. I would hope we could have the Canada Line cars here maybe by late 2019. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, it'll take some time to get there, but it, as Ian points out, that a lot that in both cases that's going to help uh, add considerable capacity uh, to the sky train network oh yes yeah so you know today's uh, events and thank you all for being here is very much to uh, prop is is very much to let folks know that a change is coming we still have about a month before the change so we're getting out the information in every kind of network imaginable. Uh, In-system signage, uh, digital, 
uh, advertisements, print advertisements on the website. Uh, we'll have these brochures going out um, in the system starting tomorrow. And as we get closer to October 22nd, we will have more people in the system um, helping our customers just as when the extension opens, we'll have more people in the system. Absolutely. So, you, so the Millennium Line's going to run more often, so what? So the Evergreen, what has been called the Evergreen Line is actually going to be an extension of the Millennium Line. So there won't be an Evergreen Line per se. So whatever service frequency we operate on the Millennium Line is going to be what we operate on the Evergreen Extension, at least during the peak periods of most of the daytime. The and then on the Expo Line, uh, we're looking at the average customer might see an increase in waiting time in the peak period of maybe 10 seconds, but they'll be getting a consistently larger train. So we don't think that's going to be a real they probably won't even notice that extra waiting time. So what we're hoping to see is that people will use the full length of the platform and the full length of the train, since right now some of our trains are about two thirds the length of the others, so everyone congregates where those trains stop and they don't use the long trains and the platform to full efficiency. So we think that it should help even out the customer experience. But do you know how often the train will run? It's uh, just over every two minutes from Columbia through to Broadway Commercial. Sorry, commercial Broadway. In the morning, we run initial trains from Commercial Broadway into Waterfront to help clear the crowds that come in off the Millennium Line. So that's going to continue. In fact, we're going to add a third train to the loop that does that service to provide a bit of extra lift out of Commercial Broadway into the downtown. And one of the advantages of running the Millennium Line more often at Commercial Broadway is that we'll have smaller groups of people coming in more frequently at that station, whereas right now we get very large groups every five and a half to six minutes, and that really overwhelms the circulation spaces, the escalators, and makes the trains heading into downtown very crowded. People often wait for a couple of trains to get downtown. Whereas if those millennium line trains are coming a bit more frequently, smaller groups, we hope that'll clear a little faster. In addition, Transit is in the process of building an outbound upboard platform at Commercial Broadway to serve the demand to downtown, so there's more platform capacity at that station. Notice that this here is here at Logan, there's a new platform here, so we'll be starting so the Millennium Line trains, when they're heading east, they will arrive at this platform here. So anyone who's riding through to Lodi, they'll come to this platform and get out through these exits on this side of the station, not the existing center platform. So one thing that we're going to be mentioning is that if somebody is transferring from the Millennium Line to continue towards New Westminster, it's actually better for them to change trains at Production Lee University because there they can do it on the same platform and they don't have to go down and then back up again. October 22nd. reaching out to our customers, um, so we encourage you to, to look at that, and uh, thank you very much for coming. There will be a Star Train that will be traveling on the platform if you want to get that person in shots, but other than that, I think we're wrapped up for today, so thanks again for